Hi everyone, it's Desiree. Welcome back to my channel. Thanks for joining me for another video. Today I wanted to go over some different ways that you can make a really pretty spread and it doesn't involve stickers at all. So for me, sometimes I do like to do a challenge of a no sticker spread because it does help to use some things that you probably haven't used in a bit and um, get a little bit creative in how you use different items in your in your planner to make a really pretty spread without using stickers. So I have some options that I've, I've mentioned before in the past, but some different ways that I thought up to use them um, in this video. So this is gonna be my tip video for today. Hope you all enjoy watching. So I feel like the easiest way to uh, use no stickers in your spread and to make a really cute spread is to use scrapbook paper. So I love going to uh, Joann's. I feel like Joann's and Hobby Lobby have the best scrapbook paper. I went recently to Joann's like a week ago and they had tons of really cute patterned scrapbook paper that was on sale. I think it was 10 for $2. Uh, usually these are like 59 cents or 69 cents around there. So definitely recommend getting it when it's doing one of those promos because you can get a really good deal and a good variety of paper. So I always pick up like patterns. I like picking up uh, like image images like this where I can like cut them out. So that'll be like one of the things that I would suggest doing. Um, you can use this in, in various different ways. So I'm gonna show you some different ways. I like to use paper in a no sticker spread. Oh, and all these tips, like you don't, it doesn't have to just be for a no sticker spread. You could totally implement this in with stickers um but this video is just going to focus on only no sticker stuff but yeah this would totally mix well with anything that you put together maybe like you don't have a certain colored box and you can make one on your own that's what i'm going to show first is i love making my own colorful boxes like these i made these with scrapbook paper i have this paper right here um i really like that it was a big black black background with a pattern um you don't really see it that much once you put paper on top but I like like the little lines around there and it's black um, so you can make different size boxes I usually will measure out these areas and I'll make this part fit in here so yeah just measure it out and then I think this is let me see how big is this um, okay so this is about like one and a half by two and a half one and a half by two and a half and then i kind of just size down from there and then i'll take like a white piece of paper just a regular printer paper and i'll cut this down a quarter of an inch smaller than i did the outside to get this thickness of a border and i will actually glue this on top i found that gluing is better than like using the tombow because when the tombow i have is a permanent tape and sometimes I don't get it on like perfectly the first time so I've, I've found that gluing this on is actually better because you can kind of adjust it before it dries like I'll put this down and then I can like kind of move it around until I get to kind of in the center and then just push it down and then it'll dry and then it'll be stuck on there so that's how I like to make my boxes. Again, you can make this with like any pattern. Like this would be cool with a box because it's got this fun pattern with different colors. You can make double boxes. You can make sidebar stickers. Um, it's kind of like any size you want. It doesn't have to fit perfectly in these sections because you know, I do like to layer my boxes around the spread. But I mean, just with that, like you have a bunch of boxes. I only use about that much of this paper so there's still tons of paper left to make even more and yeah i love i love doing that and it's super easy super easy to make so yes boxes definitely can use those with some scrapbook paper and then another thing is to find like again some fun patterns like i found this and when i when i saw it in the store i thought oh this would be cool to like cut up and use as like decoration 
like a decorative sticker. I'm calling it a sticker, but like a de de decorative part in the spread. So what I would do, I already cut these up into like long strips, but then I also cut them down into like single pieces. So that way, like I could layer these. Maybe I want to do like a little bit of a decorative bottom part right here would be cool like this and then you could totally layer on some boxes on top if you want to you get some layering going on over here so it's like a functional area but um you also got cute decoration over here too um, so yeah, just pull in some paper. Another thing, again, I think I showed these houses. I love this paper because I'm able, I started cutting things out. You can cut out these pieces and make your own little scenes, which is always a lot of fun. So, I mean, you can even add one here if you wanted to add some more decoration. I even like cut out the little trees, which I think is super cute. That's always a lot of fun. Actually, this is a this is already looking like a really cute spread, um, and it's different. I mean, I don't see stickers like this in any sticker books, and pairing these actually look really nice together. Um, but yeah, you have so many different like houses. Cut out all these little trees, these little bikes. There's little doggies. Uh, there's lots of little things that you can cut out. I mean. You have to cut everything out, but thankfully, since this has a white background, this is why I like this one. It's a white background, so I didn't really have to cut things out like too intricately because it matches the paper, so that's good. But even this one, like it has like a dark taupey kind of background. I mean, you just kind of cut a little bit close, and you'll get the same the same look. This one's cool because it is just like long strips, so you can kind of do what I did with these and just cut out the sections and then just like tape it down right here. And for these, when you actually have like a lot of this stuff, I recommend taping this stuff down onto the paper because the glue does kind of make things, you can kind of tell, a little bit like warped. Uh, and it will, yeah, it'll kind of warp your paper a little bit. It won't be like flat if you glue all of this down. That's a lot of glue. So for this, I would recommend just using a Tombow. But for the putting the white part on the colorful boxes, glue. That's my little tip on that. That's just from what I've noticed with the glue and the tape that I use. Uh, but yeah, that's another way that you can use paper. I actually really love the way that's looking. That's different. It looks really cool. And if you're like me and I don't know how to letter, I do like my hand, my handwriting. Um, but sometimes I like to have like quotes. So I found this paper, which has just all these different like lines of words. It's actually a quote. Oh, there's, there's various quotes. There's like one from Helen Keller, Albert Einstein, um, just different words. So what I would do, I would take this. Again, the same concept of just like cutting out sections of this paper. I don't think I'll be able to get like a whole quote since these are pretty long quotes and they don't, um, they don't repeat on the same line, like the whole thing, but that's okay. I think it would just be cool just to have like some lettering in here just to add. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm just gonna cut out one little strip of, of this words. And it's just something that you can add onto the spread. I mean, you could cut it all out. You can do like the future is, actually, let me cut this out. Let's see how this looks. I don't even know what quote this is. The future is bought with, all right. So I should, probably should have looked for a paper that would have been, worked better for this example because this letter, this the wording doesn't repeat onto the next line like I thought it was going to. It's just like little sections on this paper. So I don't know what the end of that quote is, but if you can find some paper that has like more of a repeated pattern and you can cut out the lettering, um, that's an option too. On how you can use this paper in your planner, make a really cute spread. It's decorative, it's functional. You can do all of that with 
paper, which I think is always pretty cool because, you know, paper is definitely a lot cheaper than stickers. <laughs> All right, so another thing that I know we all have a lot of in our collections, I feel like this is the first thing when you get into planning, you always kind of collect all the washi. Like you think you're going to need it, you think you're going to use it, um, but there's some washi that I don't use a lot of, but I feel like these are good ways to use them a little bit more decoratively and I might be able to use them a little bit more in my spreads compared to the way that I use them. So yeah, definitely laying out some washi, that's always a great option. Um, kind of mixing the washi together like I have these two uh, just black ones I love I love black and white and uh, I just mixed these two together I thought I made like a for a fun pattern just space them out a little bit I thought this was cool like a little diagonal uh, pattern over here even just like you know stacking them this way on the top would be nice and then um, of course you can just add your boxes you know, you can layer some boxes if you want to make like a very monochromatic type spread. And just, I think, I think that looks really cool. And you don't have any stickers. You still have like fun pattern on your spread. It's visually interesting. And it's a lot of fun to make these little diagonal ones. I suggest with these to use a, an X-Acto knife. And I just use like my little gift card to to cut around the edge because I, I think like it looks better if it's like a clean cut. So yeah, to get just a really nice cut because on this one I didn't do it that way and doesn't look as nice. Uh, but yes, recommend using the X-Acto knife to cut the washi for this little diagonal one. Um, but yeah, you could definitely use washi, make different patterns and stack them together if you have like a combo of washi that you think might pair well together. I think this is another great way to use washi personally for me that I don't tend to use very much because when I use washi I use it more as a like more of a neutral thing in my planner so I do try to stick to very neutral patterns like this would be like a lot but if I'm doing a spread and I don't have any stickers on the sp on the spread at all I feel like using more of these um like bigger patterns and colors again the washi that I probably wouldn't use in a normal spread these this would be a cool way to um use that washi because I do have some really nice patterned ones um that I never get to use because for me they kind of compete with the stickers or this the theme of the spread that I've done but if I don't have a theme if I don't have stickers and I just need like a really cool pattern really fun color this is a great way to add that into a spread yeah I really like this I'm gonna have to do again I think I'm giving giving myself ideas on like how more things that I should try out in my planner um while I'm giving you guys all these ideas but it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun to uh do something different all right, and then I also have some washi. Like if you have washi that could act like just on its own as a decorative section. So I have this like fun patterned uh, floral washi. It, adds, like, it acts like a little garden on the bottom of your spread, which I think is, is cool. So this is from the washi tape shop. And then this one has already a little scene right there. That's from Simply Gilded. It's really cute. And then this one too is a Simply Gilded one where probably around Christmas time, since it's red and green, uh, you can do some like borders of some light. So if you have these like super decorative um, patterned washi, definitely putting those on this spread would be cool. Access decoration, and then you just add in some boxes and you are, you're good to go. Once you have these boxes down, even you can mix in some of the like paper stickers with the washi, make a little garden scene up to the house. Lots of fun little uh, things that you can do on your own. Definitely a lot more creative too, because you have to like figure it out on your own too. I don't know, I like piecing together this kind of stuff. It's a lot of fun to do. Um, so that's another way that you can use washi. Then the last way is to make some boxes out of washi. So I have these like fun patterned washi right here. 
obviously this isn't like a huge wall. I actually have walls like this size that fit in here. So um, the washi tape shop has some thick rolls, which this almost fits in here actually. You'd have to put like just a tiny bit more to fill this box if you were trying to fill in a complete box on the vertical spread. But you could do that with any washi that you have. Um, this didn't match up perfectly, but I think it still looks really cool. This too, I feel like you can't really tell that much that I um, just stacked them. And that made for like a fun, colorful, like a decorative box that you can go ahead and layer on top of some, some boxes right here. Yeah, and just use that as a decorative little background for some layered boxes. Or you can always, you know, just keep it as is if you want to and not layer anything on top. But I think it looks really nice when it's got like a little box next to it. Again, add in your Your little paper stuff on the side add in some more washi and you got a cute decorative functional spread okay so that's it for the washi those are the ideas that i had there's there's tons of options out there i think i've gone over a bunch in other videos um i'll link another video i put up that's uh showed some other paper things that i've done too recently because i've been doing all these tip videos um, but those are the options that I've come up for this video. And then um, the other thing is for me, when I make spreads, I love having boxes, but I also love having bullet points and like checklists, things that I can like check off of my spread. So you don't need a sticker. You don't need like a checklist sticker. You don't need a bullet point sticker, but you would need a stencil. Actually, for this one, you would need a stencil. You don't really need a stencil, which I'll show another way to do it too. Um, but I have these stencils. These are from the Happy Planner. I believe they have something like this still. I know I've seen it at Hobby Lobby. Uh, they're pretty inexpensive, especially if they can get it on sale. Because I just recently got this one. This is like a new patterned one. But I prefer the circles and the boxes. This one has stars, which are kind of hard to get in, get draw it out and make it look decent. There's hearts and then there's little hexagons. But yeah, I usually like the circles and the squares the most. And then they come with built-in like little lines so and fit perfectly for a vertical. These were meant for the vertical, but you can use them in any spread, um, at, at least the, the little circles and the squares. So you can use these to make some checklist and bullet points so right here I did some circles I like to use a thin pen for me personally I like I don't like to be super thick so I like to use this Muji 0 0.38 to uh, draw in to stencil in the circles and then the lines so another great thing is that you don't have to you don't have to use all of them like you can pick and choose what you want to use and it's fairly easy to use too. Just kind of line it up and say for this one, I only want like three, three um, bullet points and I don't want lines and I kind of want them spaced out a little bit more. So you just pick the ones that you want and have like three right there. Over here, if you want to have some square ones but again, you need more lines because I feel like sometimes these lines are not, it's not enough lines. So you can do a square and you can do a couple of lines if you want to. Okay, I kind of messed up on that one, but you kind of get the idea. Um, you can do a couple of lines or you can do like the complete whole thing you can just do the checklist that's always an option too um i want to try out so the i know these are older but i want to try out this one because i haven't tried out these little hearts or these hexagons i want to see how hard these are to make look decent okay so here's the heart and then here's the hexagon draw the line I don't really care for the heart too much, but the hexagon's not bad. 
that's actually pretty good. Um, but yeah, I prefer the circles, the squares, the hexagons. Not too bad. I'm not even going to attempt. Oh, I guess I'll attempt this star. I feel like it's going to come out terrible, though. Because it's just so little. And it's kind of hard to get around these little sections. I mean, it doesn't look terrible, but it's a little lopsided. And I feel like stars should be, like, perfectly, like, pointed. And this is kind of, like, curved. So, not my favorite. But I do love these little checklists. It's a great way to add functional, like, things that you're able to check off in your planner without having to use a sticker. And you can put them wherever you want. You can use them however you like. And that's always a lot of fun. Just take it slow when you're tracing. Like, for me, I, if you want it to be somewhat perfect, it's never always perfect, but somewhat perfect, <laughs> definitely take it slow and um, try to follow along those, the bottom of the stencil to get a nice line. All right, so yeah, that's one way you can do that. And then another way is, like, you, if you don't have these stencils, it's fine. There's actually, which I've been meaning to buy some dot markers. I hope to buy them soon. I just haven't done it. I keep forgetting. Uh, but if you don't have dot markers, you can always use some Tombos like this. And you can add in, because the dot ones you just like kind of doop and dot and then you have like a little dot. That's more like this size right here. I'll try to link them, but you can always make your own little bullet points if you want to. Or you can use it like... Sometimes I like to use this chiseled at, I grabbed the wrong one, sorry. Okay, the chiseled edge, this one. And you can do some little, kind of like a, something you can check off right there. And then it acts like a bullet point. But you can draw in your own little circles if you want to check off, you can make them more of an open circle, so you can check them off. I actually don't mind checking off like these solid ones. Um, but you can use your markers to put in bullet points if you want to. I mean, I like the look of the stencil better. If you're able to get this stencil, I highly recommend. They're not expensive, and I'm pretty sure you can find other stencils online that aren't from the Happy Planner to find easily, uh, just because I feel like it makes it look a little bit cleaner. Not that one though, sorry. That was, that was a mess. Um, but it makes it look a little bit cleaner. Let me use the brush one. Of the circle. First, oh no, these are terrible. I take that back, don't do that. These are bleeding through. But these are, these are nice. These are nice. Definitely if you wanna do dots and they want them more perfect, get those dot circles. Um, that you can just like, you literally just go like that and it's a it's a nice little round dot on your on your spread okay so those are the functional options that i have for um no sticker type items that you can use in your planner i have an example so this is a spread that i made obviously with stickers but this part right here is all tissue paper i thought it was a fun decorative way to use something that I was planning on throwing away, but I didn't want to throw it away because it was so pretty. It came in a Be Happy box. Usually, well, sometimes the Be Happy box come with a really pretty patterned tissue paper that's themed to the box. So a lot of the times, a lot of us do not like throwing that away and we like to re repurpose it in our planner some way. So um, this is one way you can just add it decoratively in your spread, just put some glue on the back and it stays pretty put. Actually, it's been in here for almost a year and it's all good. Uh, but yeah, you can look out for some, if you have some nice tissue paper on hand, um, definitely recommend adding that to your spread. It's a fun look. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention is you can stamp in your spread, which I always think is a lot of fun. I've done that in the past. I don't think I have any in here that I've done. Um, but yeah, I've done that in the past and it's it's fun. It's fun to stamp. It's a little scary for me still to stamp, stamp in my planner because I always think I'm gonna mess up. And even though the, I think there's been a couple times I've messed up on my stamping, I'm able to like fix it and it's, it's fine. But the one thing about stamping is uh, 
it does sometimes bleed through to the other side and I don't like having to deal with that the next week. Um, so it's something I wanted to mention, um, but just be aware that it probably might, doesn't always bleed through, but it sometimes bleeds through on the other side. And it's just something that I have to end up covering up, like be mindful of the next week to cover up. Um, but I just wanted to mention stamping because there's tons of different stamps out there and I've used stamps in my planner before. Um, when I've done no sticker spread challenges, it's always a great alternative to um, not having any decorative stickers. But yeah, those are the different ways I wanted to go over for this video. I hope I was able to give you some good tips and that you're able to use in your planner. Let me know down in the description if you have any other ways that you like to add in things to your planner that are not stickers. I'd love to hear them. But if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, please hit that subscribe button. And I hope to see you all in the next one.